What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is the season finale of Prison Break Resurrection Behind the Eyes. So, like I said, this is probably going to be a one-time thing. It's just going to be these nine episodes, and part of that does bug me. And I've talked about this in a previous review, but just to reiterate why I have a problem with this overall, it honestly just feels like... It's almost like the, the show writers are like, there was so much backlash for what we did to Michael, you know, killing him off at the end of everything. It's like, people were so upset about that, and they were like, oh, I can't believe you did that, oh, that's terrible, that's terrible. And they just decided, you know what, we gotta go back on it, just to appease our fans. And there's nothing wrong with fan service, you know, I think fan service at times can be really helpful in a show. I think there are times whenever fan service, especially, you know, I, I watch a lot of comic book shows, Sometimes fan service in those shows really do help something. You know, we see a character that we know from the comics and we're like, ooh, that's so cool. Sometimes it can really help and it can help the fans enjoy themselves too. But at the same time, there are some points where you have to say, okay, we have to make a decision and we have to stick with it. We can't just, okay, p people didn't like that, so let's go back on it. The Walking Dead. Even though a lot of people hated the whole Glenn in the Dumpster thing, I think that was planned from the beginning. I think the way they shot it was shot in such a way to make us think he was dead, but they planned on bringing him back anyway. But then they kill him off with Negan and kill him, kill Abraham off as well. A lot of fans are going to hate that because a lot of fans really love Glenn and Abraham. So it's not like the show writers are going to say, you know what, they actually somehow survived that bashing to the head, and it's okay, they're, they're going to come back on the show. There's no way that's going to happen. The most we'll see of them is probably like flashbacks for now. So, I just, I think whenever show writers decide to go back on something and decide, oh, the fans didn't like that, we're going to do something else, we're going to change it up, I just, I find that very disappointing. And that's kind of what this felt like. It just felt like a reason for the fans to be like, oh, we're so upset that you killed him off, and then going, oh, here you go, guys, he's not actually dead, he's going to live happily in Rafter. And I have a problem with that, because that doesn't happen in real life. It's, that's not a real life thing. Sometimes things don't work out for the best, even with a guy as smart as Michael. So, yeah, I, I did have a problem with that. Aside from that, though, this final episode was really good. Uh, just, even though it kind of follows the Prison Break formula, even though it's pretty much by the books, like, all of these little things happening, and it looks like Jacob's got him cornered, it looks like Jacob's gonna win, and then last second something happens and Michael manages to win the day. I've seen it all before, but the creativity and how he takes down Jacob... It's just so enjoyable, and to watch Jacob go from, like, completely in control, like, I've got you cornered, I told you I'm always one step ahead of you, to, wait, what? There's blood in my office? Are you, how'd you do that? It, it's just, I don't know, whenever, the more smug the villain is, the more I'm totally in control of the situation the villain is, the funnier it is whenever they find out that everything's gone wrong. So, it really worked here, and it was enjoyable for the most part. It's just... The ending was a little bit too sappy for me, mainly because I just, I, I don't know, the The original show was very good about making sure things were not always easy, you know, there was always some sort of catch, you know, Michael found a way to keep Sarah, you know, well, keep Sarah out of prison, but at the same time it cost him his life, that type of stuff makes sense in a show, but for everything to just easily work out to where there's no repercussions for any of them, the only repercussions that happened were to teabag, and he's not really one of the main characters, so I don't know. It was a little thing that bugs me, but it is something that did get to me a little bit. Um, as far as the rest of it, uh, the plan to execute it was very well set up. The little jar of blood, I'm like, what does that mean? You know, It seems kind of out of place, just out of nowhere. Uh, so finding out that it's actually the blood of the guy that Michael was framed for killing, and he plants it in his office as well as gets his hard drives, and he has this guy that he was talking to for so long set up the entire scene to reframe uh, Jacob for killing the guy. I don't know, it was just, it was really clever, it was really well done. Didn't really see much of it coming either. Uh, it's just, that's one of the things that the show has done very well in the past, is whenever there's a plan, whenever Michael sets up something, most of the time, it works very perfectly. And some of it does is kind of a lot of chance involved. Like, how does he know that Jacob is going to shoot right as he's going through that door? You know, how, how would he know that Jacob's not going to shoot him beforehand? 
I don't know, that stuff worked out way too well, but it's still very clever the way he set everything else up, and the things that did work out, you know, going to the zoo, and Jacob's like, how, why are you going to the zoo, what's there, and it's just like, yeah, what is at the zoo, and then Jacob gets there, and the guy calls him, and says, there, there's something on his palm, and once again, something that's very, very too well timed, the guy has been checking out his tattoos. It's like there's some sort of message here. It says, "Don't interrupt his enemy, your enemy, while you're making a mistake or something like that." And he's just like, "Oh crap! I'm making a mistake. I'm at the wrong place." And that's exactly what Michael calls him. I'm like, "Okay, how do you time all of that? Like, for this guy to find this piece of information too late, <laughs> you know, until uh, Jacob shows up at the zoo, and then you call him right after that. I don't know. It's just..." There, there are a lot of things that are way too well-timed, and some of it is kind of dumb in how well-timed it is, but it's still very clever. It's still fun to watch the bad guy get his comeuppance. Uh, in the end, Michael gets a, a favor from the CIA because they see his intelligence. They see how everything worked out. Kind of played it really weird where the director was just like, you know, oh, how do we know we can trust you? It's all set up way too well. If we look too closely, there's some problems there. And at the end of all of this, like, Michael's just like, look, I gave you the guy. What else do you need? And he's just like, actually, we got his henchman, and he already spilled all the beans, so you're good to go. I'm like, why were you treating him like that then? But, I don't know, just something to make us think, oh, no, maybe Michael's not safe. Maybe something else is going to happen. But Michael does ask for one more favor, and we get to a scene where Jacob's being put in prison. And, of course, as soon as he's in there, I'm just like, I know exactly where this is going. Sure enough, T-Bag is in there. Uh, an earlier scene, Whip ends up kind of taking things into his own hands for a second. Instead of making, or instead of letting his dad sort of take the fall for everything, he decides to come in. He shoots Jacob, uh, the the woman agent that's there. She shoots him after they wrestle for a little bit, so he dies while uh, T-Bag's sitting there holding him in his hands. I would feel emotional about it if they had spent some more time on this, but we just learned they were father and son last episode, and T-Bag still isn't... He's probably still one of my least favorite characters on the show overall, so didn't really feel the emotion there, but he does manage to catch the woman agent off guard, snap her neck while she's distracted by the FBI agents coming in. So he does go back to prison, but Whip dies in the process. And so when Jacob's being escorted into his cell, I'm just like, so this is where T-Bag comes in, and he's there, and I guess he either kills him or decides to make him his, his bitch in prison. I don't know. I guess the show writers are leaving it up to our imagination, probably for the best. Uh, but yeah, like I said, bad guy gets his comeuppance. Everybody lives happily ever after. Michael with Sarah and his son, Lincoln with, uh, with Sheba. It all works out okay. So pretty much just a fan service series for the most part you know overall that's exactly how I felt um, just watching it all I could think is this is just a way for Michael to have a happy ending this isn't anything else this is just a way to resolve his story give him one final bad guy to face a guy that's super smart like he is and then in the end have him win have him go back with Sarah and Mike have Lincoln have somebody else because I guess the actress that he was with at the end of the last show wasn't available anymore so, yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. That's exactly what it was. But overall, it worked out okay. You know, there were some fun moments. There were some very interesting and exciting moments. Uh, the whole plan Michael had in place was a lot of fun as well. So, yeah. I I'll say, for me, good show. Good overall premise. Good way to wrap up the, the Prison Break series as a whole. Uh, one final thing that I do want to bring up, though, and this is just something that... It bugs me a lot whenever something doesn't get explained. We still have no clue about two things. One, there was a scene two episodes ago, and I talked about this, and it never got brought up again. There was a scene where Mike was playing, little Mike was playing in the backyard. And he was just playing around, and Jacob was in the office talking to somebody. And then he goes to find, I forget what he was playing with, it was some sort of like paper airplane or drone maybe. But he goes to go find it, goes to pick it up, and all of a sudden he gets grabbed. And in the very next scene, he's in Jacob's office asking, you know, who was that on the phone? Oh, it's your mom. Never got explained what that was. Like, honestly, I thought maybe it was going to be one of Michael's friends coming and saying, hey, your dad can't be trusted, you know, just pretend like you can trust him, and then 
you know, your, your real dad's on the way or something like that. Never got explained. We never saw a scene about what that was. Never saw who had who had him. If it was Jacob, why would you grab him like that and bring him into the woods, especially when you're just in the office? It's, what was that? What was that scene? It n- never explained. Ever. And it kind of pisses me off that that happened. Anyway, the other thing that kind of bugs me, though, another scene with Little Mike. This final episode, there was a lot of kind of, I guess, messing with Little Mike's mind. And there was a moment where Jacob is talking to Michael on the phone, and Little Mike's there, and he's just gotten done telling Little Mike, that wasn't your real dad. He's just pretending to be a real dad. This is who he really is. Shows him a picture of wanted King Loudest. And so whenever Michael calls on the phone, Little Mike's listening, and then he's like, are you threatening me, Michael? And then Little Mike's just like, stop trying to hurt my dad. Just leave him alone. And then he obviously hangs up. It's like, very good, good boy. Just to get to Michael a little bit. But ultimately, this led to nothing. You know, it didn't lead to Michael questioning his decisions. It didn't lead to Little Mike seeing him at the end and learning to trust him. It was just that scene alone, and that's it. Michael's just like, he called him dad. So he's just brainwashing him, and that's it. <laughs> it didn't lead to any emotional conclusion. There's no moment where Sarah goes and gets Little Mike, and she's carrying him out of wherever he was being held. And, you know, there, there was none of that. There was no, oh, crap, you can't trust him because he's actually Kenny Lattis. And it's like, no, son, it's me. It really is me. I'm really your dad. And Sarah's like, yes, come on, you can trust him. There was none of that. It just, next scene with them together, Sarah and Sheba are hanging out with Little Mike, and... Michael and Lincoln are in the background. I hate when scenes don't go anywhere. Speaking of scenes that go, don't go anywhere, another thing that just kind of led to nothing, this whole Lucas storyline, the guy that Lincoln owed money to, started off at the beginning of the season with this, ended up happening where they needed a ride home, he's the ride they got home, and then obviously Lincoln doesn't have the money, so he's being threatened, gets shot in the last episode, but turns out he just needed a few hours in the hospital, goes to fight him, and then next thing you know, he's helping Sarah in the school where Mike's being held. What happened to Luca? Did he kill him? What happened to... How did he know where to go after all of this? How did he know that he's being held in the school? Because Sarah found out from the the dead guy, or the the guy that got shot, uh, the one that they tried to make us think that Michael got shot, it turned out to be the, the guy agent. Yeah, he was the one that told Sarah where to go to find little Mike, so how did Lincoln find out? And how did he get there so fast, and how did he show up right at the time whenever the Thoreau guy shows up and holds a gun to Sarah, and Lincoln's just right there, and bam, knocks it. How? Explain something, please. Like, ex- explain these plot holes. <sighs> so, just a little frustration I wanted to get out here at the end, but overall, it doesn't change my opinions of the show it's still good, it's just these questions are going to bug me a little bit. It's something that I hope maybe the show writers will look at and say, okay, we did pour there, and then maybe come out and say, alright guys, here's some deleted scenes that we didn't get to add into the show. That will explain some of these issues that you're having, so I don't know. It's, the little things that need explaining are going to bug me a little bit. Maybe for everybody else it works out okay, but me personally, I hate it whenever little things don't get explained. Especially whenever it leads to scenes that ultimately come out of that not explaining. So, uh, long story short, I, I'm glad that they did have this final season to sort of wrap up some of the stories. Even if it was kind of a little too happy-go-lucky, but it was another chance to see Michael in action, so can't complain too much. But that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts in this final episode and this season overall? Uh, Do you think there should be another season to kind of, I guess, progress Michael's story further? Do you think this is a good place to end it all? Let me know. We can talk about it, discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for, I guess, other reviews. Go check out some other videos now. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace out.